Graham, um, I'm sure you'll get plenty of quarterback questions, but let's start with just the offense installation in the spring. Did you get everything you wanted done? And then retention to the fall. How has that been? Yeah, I think we're way ahead of from just from a installation and a understanding standpoint. I don't know, way ahead of where you'd expect to be, but we're definitely way ahead of where we're in the spring. Um, the guys did a great job getting work in in the summer, whether we were around or not. And so, um, you know, I think from a understanding standpoint, from knowing what to do, from under knowing the offense, the guys are pretty far along. Uh, and so that, that helps the calls. And, and we're still being obviously very basic. Uh, we have an installation schedule where you just kind of build on it, you know. And so first time through the installation, you're going to be uh, – Pretty basic, and so they should know what to do on this one. But um, I can think of very few mental errors or just busted assignments, and that, that's, like I said, very encouraging because uh, if we just all know what we're doing, it gives us a chance, you know. And I think the key is uh, the, the more they understand, that it allows them to play faster, and that's the key to, you know, I think the way we do things and the way we install, the way we do our offense, like the most important thing for us is, you know, trying to really make them understand it just so we can eliminate any hesitation. Because, you know, if you recruit a fast kid and you got him hesitating, he's probably not going to be very fast anymore. And so that's called bad coaching, you know. So if you recruit a fast kid to be fast, let him be fast is kind of the thought behind it and uh, whatever the case may be for each kid. And so, um, you know, like I said, I think they're picking it up. That's encouraging. That's allowing them to play fast, uh, which, is, which is the whole point of it. And hopefully we just keep building on that. How's the timing today? I know Neil mentioned – Still a work in progress, at least yesterday. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think that comes with like live reps. Uh, in, in the summer, they I thought they did. You know, they did a good job throwing with it. You know, um, as often as they could and getting a lot of work together. Uh, but but when you put something in front of them, it's obviously different, and uh, the timing is going to be a little different. And so, um, I, th I don't think that it's necessarily like if you go out there on the air and you're throwing, I think oh they got pretty good timing because they've done a lot of that lately. Uh, it's just you know when, when people are in front of them or you know there's different coverages, you got press, it, it throws some timing off, and that just takes time and a couple of reps to get used to. And so, um, still working on it, but uh, we we have some talented dudes out there that are making some plays, which is uh, kind of what you want. Has any of um, the quarterbacks, you know, started to separate themselves? I mean, it's still it's very, very early. Um, yes, yeah, I would say it's still really early, you know, and I would agree with that. Uh, we haven't put pads on yet, and so, you know, you're still almost getting a summer workout almost, it feels like, you know. Uh, so um, I think tomorrow, obviously, when you put the pad, you at least get shoulder pads on, it'll probably be a lot different. Um, and and uh, you can really start seeing a few more things, you know, and, and – uh, cool and pads come on, the pass rush uh, ramps up a little bit. And, you know, I think that uh, Coach Brown's done an incredible job here of, like, teaching them tempos of practice and what you can do with pads and without pads. And so uh, sometimes I think they get a, um unrealistic feel of how clean the pocket is when pads aren't on because they, you know, one, the D-line does a really good job of, of slowing up and, and not getting underneath that quarterback, uh, especially with no pads on. And so, um, like I said, when we put pads on, it'll probably uh, – be a lot more telling tomorrow. How much do you need to see before you start making um, decisions? I'm, I'm sure Frank Signetti is doing it with Keaton and Nick Patty. I mean, you're doing it with all your guys. You've got to give guys opportunities. But at some point, you need to see specific guys with specific groupings. How much of that do you need to see before you start making those decisions? Uh, you know, I think we're trying to do the best we can to get guys reps with all the different groupings to see what you're working with. Yeah. You know, I think that um, regardless of who you're playing with as a quarterback, your job is to make it go, you know, and that's, uh, you know, I, I've said this, probably said it here before because I've said it any time I've had talked about quarterbacks is your job is to make the guys around you better. Um, and and uh, and you can see that on the football field. And, and the guy that does make the guys around him better uses the offense regardless of what group it is or who they're going with, the offense looks better, you know. And so um, that's kind of the key. And I think, like I said, trying to get reps with as many guys as we can with, with different uh, – with different guys around them. Uh, one, to let them work with different guys, and two, just to see them interact with, with each unit. Um, and then, you know, I think for us, as soon as some, you know, guys start separating themselves, you start, you have to start trimming it down, you know what I mean? And so, as, as soon as I think you see separation, even if, you know, two separate themselves from the other ones, you know, well, okay, well now let's, 
move to those two, and then hopefully one separates themselves from there, you know. And so uh, when you when you see separation, I think that's when it's time to start making decisions. And, and uh, like I said, trying to get as many reps as we can with as many groups as we can to to, to create that. Talk a little, a little bit about the evolution of your understanding of the running game and its importance, in it, especially uh, at, at North Texas, I guess, is where it kind of hit you the most when you, when you had to call it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I love to throw the football. Don't get me wrong, but um, to to win it, to win at a really high level, I think at some point you got to be able to run the football. And uh, you know, the other thing about it is and. As a quarterback, and I play the position, it's hard to be on every night. You know what I mean? And I think that being able to run the football can take some pressure off if you're not, you know, if you're a little bit off that night or something like that. And uh, and like I said, I think that it's a, it's a critical part of the game that you, that you got to be able to do to be successful. And uh, and the other thing is, uh, you know, a lot of times the running back's the best athlete on your team, you know, and so you're crazy not to give the ball to your best athlete every now and then. It's, it's kind of the thought there too. So. Um, especially at North Texas, we had a really good one, Jeffrey Wilson, and uh, we, we we rolled him really, you know, a lot, and uh, he, he's a large part of the success that program had. Uh, you know, I think that last year at SC it was the same way. We had Conte Ingram, um, who needed touches, was really special with the football in his hand, and uh, did a lot for us offensively. And so, you know, I believe in running the football. I think you got to be able to do it. Uh, there's going to be times where everyone knows you're doing it and you still got to be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to finish games or in short yard situations, um, everyone in the stadium probably knows you're going to run the football. And I think there's got to be a mentality that we're going to be, be successful doing it. And so uh, I think that's important. And I think that also the basis behind our offense and really any offense is, is um, or in my mind what it should be, is, is get your best playmakers the ball with space. And uh, – you know, that, that's going to be running the football, that's going to be throwing the football, that may be screens, whatever the case may be, you got to find a way to get your best playmakers the ball in space and then let them go be them. And uh, so so that's where I think that, you know, we've, we have we run the ball a lot more than most, uh, or not a lot more than most, probably a lot more than Coach Leach. But um, we, we believe in running the football. It's going to be a big part of what we do. I think offensively, uh, our offensive line is one of our stronger points, and so that helps in that cause. And uh, so, so we'll lean on those guys. And uh, like I said, we I think we have a chance to be special running the football, and we got to do it. You know, have, when Mike Leach hears that or how mummy, they're going to kick you out of the air raid club. <laughs> I'm probably already <laughs> kicked out when I left him, but in his mind, no. But uh, <laughs> you know, I think the air is more of a philosophy. I don't know if I've said that a lot. So um, he probably has already kicked me out, but but uh, everyone else keeps me in, and and it's more of a. You know, kind of what I was talking about earlier, just, hey, get your guys to play fast and, and know what they're doing. I know Momi likes that book, The Perfect Pass. Yeah. Well, Leach thinks quick games, run games, so. <laughs> <laughs> How is JT different, or is he the same as he was a few years ago when you were working with him? Uh, you know, I think the thing about JT is he's very, uh, he's very intelligent and uh, – I don't want to necessarily say unemotional, like he doesn't have any emotions, but he, he's very even killed would probably be a better way of putting that, you know. And I think that uh, because of that, you know, coaching him, it, he doesn't change much, you know. And, and so I think he's very similar to the way he was before. Uh, like I said, he, he's always been very intelligent, understands football really well. Uh, I think maybe now he even understands a little better because he's seen a lot of stuff. And, and uh, I'm sure Georgia saw all sorts of defenses and had all sorts of responsibilities put on him. So I think – uh, he probably understands it even better now, uh, especially like you know from a protection standpoint. Um, really understands what you're trying to do in the protection game and knows how to protect himself. But other than that, you know he's a very similar player. Uh, like I said, he's intelligent. He knows what the defense is trying to do. Knows how to make good decisions and um, you know stays very even keel with whether it's good or bad. He's just going to be right here, you know, emotionally and and uh, that's. A lot of times, a good a good quality to have as a quarterback, that's for sure. You know, not that this matters, but you know, looking at him, he's got long arms and high hips. He's got kind of a different, unique kind of a body type you don't normally see in that type of quarterback. And I'm not sure that means anything other than this looks a little unique. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's got long arms for unique's a good way to describe JT. Probably he's uh, a <laughs> he's a great kid and, and yeah. does a lot of things right. He uh, 
you know, the long arms probably help create, you know, a little bit more of a whipping action. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, you know, I think he has a natural, you know, his body has a natural whip to it and uh, helps spin the football. A little three quarter too. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess sometimes you have to have different arm angles to. Especially now. I think the, yeah. the, the thought process probably in the last, uh, not 20, probably the last 10 years or so has probably changed on that. Yeah. You know, used to, they wanted you always to throw it way over the top and be super high. Um, with the evolution of the game of football, I think arm angles have changed and throwing from different slots has become a, a positive instead of a negative. I think it used to be a negative at times with quarterbacks, and now I think that people want that and want you to be able to do that. And so, um, most guys now, I think, have um, either worked on that or had to f figure out a way to throw from different from different arm slots, uh, just because that's part of the game now. It's changed. Dan Marino wasn't over the top. <laughs> yeah, he he's pretty good. consistent though on with his uh, motion. You could he, hear uh, it before you saw it. Yeah, he's a yeah. he's a gifted thrower. That's for sure. Yeah. I bet he can still throw it. Yeah. Um, how much of an advantage is it for Ludger, whatever, for you guys to have an experienced offensive line? that position group being, you know, one of the most experienced really on your entire football team, not just the offense. I think that's a huge luxury, and I think that um, – I don't that really think it matters what level you're at. You know what I mean? If you were going to build a football team, you'd build it probably from, you know, the inside, you know, the, the, the lines out um, on both sides of the ball. And I think that if you look at even, you know, teams that win the Super Bowl now, uh, you can say what you want, but they're probably really dominant um, up front, you know. And uh, – even, and I know it was on the defense side of the ball, but, you know, back when the Giants won their two Super Bowls, I mean, to me it was because they were great up front, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Last year, the Rams defensive line, I think most people would argue, is probably the best, if, or one of the best, if not the best defensive line in the league. Uh, I think the same thing on the offensive side. You know, if to be really, really good, you got to be good up front. Because if those guys are good, they make everything else easier. You can run the ball more effectively because you're going to create more seams. Um, you can throw the ball more, more effectively because you're probably going to be a little more protected. And so um, those guys being good is, like I said, probably the most important part of the game uh, or offense. And if you could build a team, that's where you'd start. And so having those guys makes everything else better. And, you know, the, the amount of reps they have together even makes it that much, that, 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 that much more convenient, I guess, for us as coaches because um, they've seen most things. They communicate with each other well. You know, one thing when we came here, when I came in, that we tried to do is the best we could is keep their communication the same. You know what I mean? And, and no matter what verbiage we changed from play standpoints and stuff like that, for the most part, the best we could, we tried to keep the off offensive line communication the same because we did have such an experienced group that's played so many games together. And so um, having that's been big. We've tried to build around that. Uh, I think that, you know, as an offense, we'll probably kind of go as they go because um, that they're a really consistent unit with lots of reps. And uh, if they go if they go play dominantly like I think they can, I think we'll be really good. And if they struggle, we're going to struggle. To be honest with you, so um, we've kind of you know I think we can we can build around that group, and they're going to be a big part of uh, what we do this season. It's Bryce Ford we can see at the ceiling. You now Bryce is super talented, and I think that he's just gotten better and better since I've been here. Uh, I think he's gotten more and more comfortable. I think yesterday. That's what I talked about the offense. What we did, what I thought we did best yesterday was hit, hit some explosives. And uh, obviously explosive plays win games. And most of those were to Bryce down the football field. And so, you know, he's big. Uh, the thing about he has to be, to be as big as he is, he moves really, really well. You know, he has almost has like a little guy skill set and a, and a giant body. And so uh, I haven't seen that very often in coaching. And so um, he, he's uh, – he can be as good as he wants to be, and I think that he's been more and more consistent since, you know, like I said, the consistency's gotten better and better since I've been here, not just like making plays, but more probably just having the same attitude every single day. You know what I mean? And I think that that's going to be big for him is just showing up every day, being the same guy every day, and when you do that, good things usually happen, and he's done a great job of doing that. Hey, Graham, going back to what you said about it, it's hard for the quarterback to be on all the time. It, there's a million things a quarterback or a passing game to do, but I would imagine there's a million ways to stop it. Is it – is it hard to stop a run game that's that's going and confident, even though there's really only so many ways you can run the ball? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think it's it's um, if you're just mashing people up front, and like I said, it kind of goes back to that offensive line conversation we just had. Like, if if you're mashing dudes up front and just physically dominating, it's really hard to stop, no matter what you do, you know. And so um, that's where that experience line really is going to come in. 
And I think, you know, kind of with that quarterback, like you said, you can give him a lot of different looks and stuff. But um, from playing the position, there's just certain days where it's like you're just off. You know what I mean? And that's – if the problem is – um, if you can't run the football and he's a little bit off, and then sometimes you can come out of it after a little bit, you know. But um, you, there's there's times where uh, by the time you come out of it, you've lost the game. You know, I can remember as a player, it feels like a couple times, especially when I was young. It's like, well, I'm playing well now, but it doesn't matter. I've already thrown four picks. You know, the game's over. But uh, <laughs> so that's just the way it goes, you know. And so uh, that's what I mean. You know, when, when you're having days like that. Uh, or if you know you can't hit something, if you can kind of get them get some momentum running the football, I think that's the key. Is is like I said, if if you can get some positive things to happen, well now you can kind of come out of it. You can relax as a quarterback and start playing at a little higher level. Uh, but but I I do think what you said, like you know you can do what you want up front, but if if uh, you're getting pushed off the ball, it's tough at that point. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the only way to truly, I guess. Stop it at that point. Try to get more guys in the box, and now you're gonna be really vulnerable, and you got to be able to beat it throwing the football. And so, um, yeah, I'd say that, like I said, if, if you're playing really well and you're just being more physical than the opposite team, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to stop the run game. Are you running backs different enough that you know variety enough uh, that one day one might be featured one against a different team, you might feature a different one, or are they, or are they very similar? Uh, you know, I think we've got a couple that are pretty similar and, and uh, each different things. You know, I think with running backs, kind of like maybe like a, you know, a shooter in basketball, like just feed the hot hand, you know what I mean? If someone, every time they touch you, if they're getting a lot of yards, keep giving to that guy is kind of my thought on that, you know, and, and especially if you've got similar backs. Uh, you know, there's been times where, uh, or there's been years and times where we've had a couple guys that, that we've mixed it up with. Um, and then there's been times where we've had one guy that's just, been pretty dominant, you know what I mean? And we, like you talked about at North Texas, Jeffrey Wilson, like we'd be crazy to take that guy off the field, you know? And so if, if you got a guy that's playing at a high level um, that you just can't take off the field, we're gonna try to keep him on the field, you know? And I think, like I said, Keontae last year was, was that way for us at SC for the most part. Unless he was tired, he was just the best one with the ball in his hands. And uh, so we kept feeding him and got him as many reps as he could get. Where, you know, the first couple of years, at SC, we kind of did it, but a little bit more more by committee. Um, some of that was due to injuries, and some of that was just due to like that the guys were pretty interchangeable. You know, one year I know uh, we had Vi, then we had um, we had Vi, Stephen Carr, and Marquis Step, and they were all like different games got featured more than the other. You know, and uh, it just kind of came to, down to who had the hot hand that day and and uh, who was who was playing at a high level, and so. That'll be uh, the way we approach it. Is there an advantage when trying to implement a new system when you look at having a little bit of a prior relationship with JT? Or is it still a pretty big learning curve for both of you concerning the same program? No, I definitely think it's an advantage, you know. Because just more than anything coming in, he has a, you're not learning a completely new, new way of doing things, you know. And uh, kind of like I said, JT's a really intelligent kid. And so when he, when he showed up, We've changed some verbiage, we've changed some signal, you know what I mean? Like we've changed a few things since he's been gone. <clears throat> and when we left SC and came here, we, we mixed a couple things up, changed the way we call certain things, the way we signal certain things. But he still remembers like, oh, that was this, that was this, that was it, you know what I mean? And so, um, like I said, he's stepping in way ahead of just a guy you took, you know, a, a normal transfer you took that you're having to teach from, from scratch, you know? And so, uh, I think having a prior relationship, him having a year of reps in the offense and uh, being familiar with what we do uh, definitely helps the calls and, and speeds up the, the, you know, his ability to play, you know, his ability to, to execute on the field. You said they're going from um, your offense to Monkey's office, I think it's to Georgia, kind of NFL style, mm -hmm. that the pre-snap stuff and anticipating a defense, he anticipated that would make it better, easier for him on the air raid, so much read and react. Is that valid? Is that something you can see being a pointer? Have you seen that already, that jumping from one system to another has kind of helped him? I just gone back to what he did before. Uh, I mean, I think it's a little early to say, like, you know, how much it's helped him or hasn't helped him. I do think, like, he's a really intelligent kid that can handle a lot of information. You know, some people, I think, um, I think at the quarterback position, one, you can overload them with information. Uh, 
and sometimes you can you know you can slow him down if you give him too much information. He's a guy that can handle a lot of information because he's an intelligent kid and can process information quickly. And so uh, you know I think him going going to that uh, going and playing at Georgia and, and kind of doing different stuff and and uh, I would assume having a lot more you know responsibility on him, especially pre-snap, as far as you know calling protections and stuff like that. Uh, and I didn't ID and runs or whatever the case may be, um, you know. I think, and then coming back to this, I think that will help him. You know what I mean? Just because he's he's uh, had a lot thrown on him, and uh, here, from a standpoint, I think it helps because if he needs to make an adjustment, he can, but doesn't have to. At the same, you know what I mean? Like we're not going. I'm not going to force him to do something or, or make him do things. But when he sees things that he can attack. Maybe something you know from his past or, or from being in Georgia trigger something. He has the freedom to make those adjustments, you know. And so, um, hopefully, that like I said, the information helps. Okay, thanks, coach. Yes, sir.